So, you came here looking for how to make 3D player models in Minecraft. Well, you come to the right place. My name is Evanoff Matthews, I've pioneered the use of 3D and animated player models for over a year now, and it's finally time that I show you my steps and techniques to really bring your models to life. This tutorial is going to show you how to begin modeling your player, the basics of Blockbench, and how to add your model into the game. So for this tutorial, you're going to need three items. First one being Minecraft Bedrock Edition, obviously, so you can see your characters. Uh, the next one is Blockbench. Blockbench is a 3D modeling software specifically for Minecraft, and it has all the tools you're going to need, from 3D modeling to painting to animating, Blockbench has everything for you. Now, the last thing you're going to need is one of the 3D skin bases I have in the description. It is basically a starting resource pack with the player model in it. I created this so it's a lot easier for people to quickly import their models to the game. So, I have my two bases right here. One of them is for Alex and one of them is for Steve, whichever one you prefer to start with. Uh, today, we are going to be putting Alex into some Minecraft drag, so I'm going to be choosing her. And what you're going to need to look for is you're going to go to Models and go to Entity. And right here, this player.json is what you're going to be looking for. You're going to right click this and you're going to open with Blockbench. Now, this should open up the model and I will meet you in Blockbench in just a moment. So now that we are in Blockbench, I'm going to quickly go over everything you're seeing on your screen right now. So, the UV is obviously where things are mapped on the model itself. A tip that I like to do is if you right click it and go to Display UV, you want to turn on all faces on all elements so you can kind of see where everything is, even if it's invisible. And it also just helps to see if there's anything that's overlaying or if you want to organize it a bit more. I would recommend keeping the base skin where it is, but that's personal preference. Now, underneath this, it is the texture panel. You can add multiple skins to this, but the main one that's going to show in game is anything that's named alex.png. To our right, we have the outliner. This shows everything from the cubes to the folders, to just every a uh, piece of the model itself. Everything is organized into the, its respective folders and that's going to be very useful to know later. And when we click on anything, the elements tab will pop up. This just gives you the specific numbers to everything in regards to position and size and, and rotation, everything like that. What I first like to do is I like to add space so then I can begin creating the places where models are going. So I, in the pack, added an extra space template that you are, you can use. When you do equip it, it does get very wonky. Do not panic. All you have to do is up here where it says 64 by 64, you click this and then you double the numbers to 128. And it should be fixed, no problems. You should be ready to start adding pieces. So what I like to do is I like to add a group. What this does is it basically gives the model a space to say basically where it's going and this is very useful if you need to rotate things. So I have this set to the side right now. Um, it is attached currently to the body folder. Make sure whatever you're creating is attached to its respective piece. So if you're making a head piece, make sure it's in the head folder. If it's supposed to be on the arm, make sure it's in the arm folder and so on. Now with this, I'm now able to create a cube. You can see at the top, it's created a little map for it. You are able to freely move this around. Um, as an, For an example, I'm going to move this to the head and I can turn this into a little bun. Now, sometimes it is okay for things to overlay. It's really personal taste on if you're okay with doing this. Some people would prefer to just make a completely new texture, but sometimes I like to just overlay it and make sure that it is smooth going through. So like this is the, a simple way of just adding cubes to pieces. With that, we have the edit tool pretty much down. I am going to move this over because I do need to point out the rotation like I was talking about. So. Pivot tool is very important when it comes to rotating. This is where it's gonna, this is considered like the center of the model. So wherever this is placed, it's gonna rotate around it. So you wanna make sure it's in like a good spot and then where 
then you were able to rotate it. And as you can see, wherever that pivot point was, that's where it's rotating. I do want to keep in mind, rotating can get very weird if you rotate it in specific ways. You can get these really weird numbers. You want to make sure that they're in like that quarter intervals. So this would be closest to 13.5. This would be closer to negative 5. And then this would be 9.25. You just want to make sure they're in that quarter intervals because when you export it into the game, it can get, it can rotate in weird places. With that though, the whole creating models and stuff is done. This is really up to you to just really go at it and make your own little projects and pieces. Uh, I am going to do a little speed run. I'm going to put Alex into full drag. So I will be back. Okay, so as you can see, I have my pieces laid out. I have a big gown skirt that I love doing with just two cubes and one of them being slightly inflated as like that, give it that second layer. And then I have the bun up at the top. But as you can see, there's obviously no textures. So now we are moving on to the paint section. Now, this is a choice. I personally like to edit the textures on paint.net but there's always the option to edit it inside of Blockbench itself, which is what I'm gonna go through right now. To grab colors, all you have to do is hold Alt and then click on the color and it'll grab it for you. Obviously you can pick your own colors if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to press G to turn on the grid. There are plenty of options and tools you can use. Uh, for example, I can draw just a whole shape to fill this in. I can also just use the pixel brush. I can use the paint bucket and switch it to face. So it's really just up to you how you'd like to go about these things. There's also the mirroring, which will give you that symmetry of the color. And this is really something you can just mess with. Um, it has plenty of options. Uh, global symmetry is for the entire look. Local symmetry is just for the piece that you are using. Uh, you can switch what axis it's mirroring on. And yeah, as you can see, I'm already getting the bun going. I'm just trying to match what Minecraft has for her hair. Again, all of this is for styling preferences. You can even just import your own textures and shapes into this if you have other models. All right, so I got the bun down. Now, for the skirt, I am going to re-enable this, and I'm going to grab the color. I will disable the leg so you can see this just a little bit better. Uh, that when I turn on X and Z symmetry, and turn on local symmetry, you can see that not only does it go left, mirror the left and right, and it also mirrors the back as well. So this is one way of just painting a whole thing if you'd like, or if you want to make sure it's special on all sides. Uh, that is not what I'm going for at the moment, though. I am going to be painting this entire thing, and because I need to show y'all the smooth brush. I forgot to mention earlier, up here you can change the size of both the brushes. Uh, you can change the opacity as well as well as the softness for the smooth brush. However you prefer to texture, it's all here for you to mess around with and really find your style. Uh, I can show you the copy and paste tool. Now this is more for the 2D, the UV part on the corner. You can grab anything you like and you can copy it to wherever you need it. So what I just did here is I copied it to the second layer. So as you can see, it got a bit bigger. How I like to go about skirts is I like to round out, let me turn on mirroring. I like to round out the corners just to give it that Minecraft feel. Yeah, perfect. Well, not so perfect, but it gets the point across. Again, there are plenty of ways you can go about making skirts and 
uh, hair pieces and everything like that. These are just my techniques. And also probably want to be more simpler techniques if you're just new to making models and stuff. So now that we have our skirt texture and our hair texture, I'm going to edit the rest of this outfit off camera. So I will be right back. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, I have the same shape as what we did, but I added the textures. As you can see, I have the skirt and the bun textures up here. I gave her a little bang. Just... So I needed to point this out. Once you have your model, I noticed that I still have the legs here. And when you walk, they're gonna clip through the skirt. So I needed to point this out. When you wanna get rid of legs, you need to keep the folder but delete the cubes inside of the folder. So as you can see, now it's just an empty folder named left leg. You wanna do this for anything that you do not want anymore. You are able to freely edit the cubes that are inside of the folders. You just cannot delete the folders themselves. You can, e you can even move them around. It's just, once they're deleted, it gets pretty buggy from my experiences. I also just realized the arms were backwards. <laughs> Um, I can just easily fix that with this little mirroring tool. Perfect. So, now that you have your model, all you really have to do is save it. Make sure that the texture that you want is named the alex.png. Perfect. Um, now, that is the modeling part down. Now, the next step is adding it to the game. So. Now that we have our model, we have it finished, we have it saved into our folder. The next thing you need to do is just edit the pack itself. So, you want to go into the manifest.json, and you will see this little line of code. All you need to do is go to uuidgenerator.net, and you need to grab two codes and replace the two codes in this folder. All you need to do on this website is to refresh the page. I'll give you a new one. Just like this, you want to save. And that is it for this text document. Next thing you want to do is go into text and the enus.lang. And you are going to rename this to whatever you want the pack to be and whatever you want the pack description to be. I'm going to keep it like this for now. Last thing you need to do is edit the pack icon, which I am keeping the same, and that is it. All you need to do is add this to your development resource packs folder in Minecraft. Or, an easy way of doing this is, you want to select all of this, add it to a zip folder. I'm using WinRAR, but I'm pretty sure Windows has its own little way of compressing things. And then what you want to do is you want to replace the .zip with .mc pack. And that is it. When you open it up, it's going to open up Minecraft for you and it'll download it straight to game. So I am going to add this to my game and I will be right back. Okay, as you can see, it is now in the game. You can see the pack icon, pack name, pack description, yeah, yeah. So, that is basically it. You're gonna walk, you're gonna go back to your menu and you're not gonna notice anything at first. That's because it does not edit custom skins. It edits the character creator skin. So if I go to the dressing room, you'll see that my character creator outfits have been switched with the 3D model. And that is basically it for this tutorial. You can go into games and you can mess around with them. Obviously, if it's in your global resources, it you can only see them. The only way for other people to see them is if you add it to the world resources, like individual world resources. So that is basically it for this tutorial. You now know how to edit the model and add it to the game. I cannot wait to see what people create with this information, and I hope to hear from y'all soon. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck!